Ladies and gentlemen, let us welcome a man who makes people in Washington laugh at themselves, but only on advice of counsel, Mark Russell. <laughs> Thank you very much. Good evening. Now, before we begin, I know we always tell you that we are live from Buffalo, and that isn't exactly true. Uh, literally, we are just a little bit outside of Buffalo. The State University campus is in the little town of Amherst, New York. And recently, Amherst, New York, received national publicity. <laughs> yes, this is where it happened, my friend. <laughs> We're at a Unitarian church. You can get free condoms on Sunday. That's right. <laughs> well, they're proud of that. No, what happened, as you know, a minister here not long ago on Sunday passed out the free <laughs> uh, to the congregation. I don't know. Wouldn't have been more discreet to put a machine in the vestibule. I was just, <laughs> just a thought there. Now, speaking of church, not long ago, I, I wasn't taking any chances. About a month ago, I sent a check to Oral Roberts. <laughs> I do not want that man's death on my conscience. Now, as, as you know, Oral Roberts said that God told him that unless we send money, he's going to die. Right? So far, there's been no ransom note. <laughs> now, Congress is back in session, and according to congressional tradition, they open each day with a prayer and close it with an investigation. Well, <laughs> earlier this month, you may remember reading that in Washington, we had a devastating snowstorm. I mean, it was rough, and we don't know how to cope with that, the way you folks he do here. I mean, you were without a federal government for about four days, at which point the stock market shot way up. But what they do, what the government does whenever we have a snowstorm, they put out word and they say, all non-essential government employees need not come to work. <laughs> George Bush made a snowman. <clears throat> Well, let's get right to the problems at hand here. Here we go. Let's rally round our president and let's not cast aspersions. When he gives an explanation, I believe both versions. Our leader's not much for details. He said they often bore me. He calls Don Regan up and says, Don, make up my mind for me. When did Reagan make the deal? The months sometimes will vary. What Ron recalls occurred in August. Don said, uh-uh, January. They're hanging Reagan out to dry. His epitaph's not fancy. He broke the first commandment. Thou shalt not hang up on Nancy. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, the latest development in what one is tempted to call senilligate was uh, just <laughs> yesterday when the Justice Department may join Oliver North and his attorney's attempt to have the whole Iranian investigation declared to be unconstitutional. I tell you, these Washington lawyers would find a loophole in the, loophole in the law of gravity. No question about it. And what they did, I mean, eventually in Washington, they'll declare the entire Constitution to be unconstitutional. Now, North and his lawyers have said that the Constitution is violated by the very Office of Special Prosecutor and the ethics law which created it. Now, if the Justice Department goes along with that, is that necessarily a cover-up? No. It is necessarily a mudslide. But you don't suppose this has anything to do with Oliver North's secretary telling about all of that shredding of federal documents, do you? Nah. <laughs> See, what it is, when they can't stand the heat, they call the stove illegal. Now, the other day, 
The other day, the president, in the State of the Union address, he said, quote, I take full responsibility for what happened. Now they're looking for volunteers to tell him what happened. <laughs> then he said, he said, we will not yield to terrorist blackmail. 2,000 anti-tank missiles, a Bible, and a cake, maybe, but that's it. <laughs> I still can't get over the fact that we sent a Bible to the Iranians. Just the perfect gift for your average fanatic Muslim fundamentalist. <laughs> well, now right after the State of the Union address was the traditional Democratic response by the new Speaker of the House, Jim Wright of Texas, and the Senate Majority Leader, Senator Robert Byrd of West Virginia. They are the Bartles and James of Congress. <laughs> I think a little more sinister than that. A Jim Wright, you know, he had those hand-tooled cowboy boots, kind of slick, you know. He kind of looked like the, the stagecoach robber in the old movies, you know. Jim Wright says, we're going to cooperate real good, Mr. President. <laughs> well, it was great television. Meanwhile, over there on cable, they were preparing for a live aid concert for CNN. <laughs> Ted Turner will join hands with himself and sing, I am the world. Geraldo Rivera will save a live raid on Nicaragua, and since the news is so grim, they're trying to lighten it up now on television. A good example of that would be CBS's new morning program, and that is Featherlight. In fact, the Capitol Hill correspondent is Pee Wee Herman. <laughs> and then you have on ABC, ABC gave us that miniseries uh, last week, America with a K, the story of the Soviet Union's diabolical plan to misspell the name of every country in the world. <laughs> and so, well, Gorbachev, just in time for the release of America with a K, he released 140 political prisoners, and this is part of his so-called open policy of glasnost. Glasnost, that's a Russian word meaning shortage of barbed wire. <laughs> well, and Gorby. Now, Gorbachev, Gorbachev then met with uh, Norman Mailer, Yoko Ono, and Chris Christopherson, Ed McMahon, Doc Severinsen, and the NBC Orchestra, and he said, he said that in the Soviet Union there will be democracy, but only under Soviet guidelines, which means that every Russian has the complete freedom to stand in the breadline of his choice. Meanwhile, the Iran-Iraq war has declared itself to be mutually bankrupt and it will only be fought on Sunday nights on 60 Minutes. <laughs> Tell you who else is back in the news, and that is Amy Carter. Amy Carter's in a little bit of trouble. She's been charged with disorderly conduct in connection with demonstrating against the CIA's campus recruiting. And uh, Amy's distraught parent said, we never had a politician in the family before. <laughs> well, we all remember. <laughs> We all remember when Amy was a little girl, and, remember, and, and she expressed concern about the bomb, and that's when the CIA first put a bug in her Barbie doll. Well, at least, listen, at least the kid is doing something on campus. I mean, I travel on campuses all the time, and believe me, on the average campus, their favorite role model is Ivan Bosky. And I'm not, I'm not making this up when I tell you that Amy's attorneys for the upcoming trial have subpoenaed Eugene Hassenfuss. Don't you love it when news events join each other in the dark and join hands? I mean, we, we should be hearing from Patty Hearst any day now. <laughs> Eugene Hassenfuss, that's right, he's been charged with running guns to Maureen Reagan in Nicaragua. <laughs> Maureen Reagan has been acting as an intermediary between Ollie North and Margaret Truman. This has been fully documented <laughs> in a recent issue of the Beirut Free Press in an article by Tricia Nixon. Now, all... All, and Maureen, did you read about Maureen about, about a month ago? Front page of the Wall Street Journal, Maureen Reagan says that she has seen the ghost of Abraham Lincoln in the Lincoln bedroom of the White House. In the article, she said, she said I'm not kidding. She said, I've been in the Lincoln bedroom, and I saw the ghost of Lincoln. She said he's a transparent person. Sounds more to me like she's been in the cabinet room, but anyway. <laughs> And Maureen has been, as she's been named, co-chairperson of the Republican Party, a job I assume she will share with William McKinley. Now, it seems, 
I just thought, see, with all of those supernatural spirits rattling around in the White House, it should make it a lot easier for them to explain the Iranian deal. <laughs> the devil made them do it. Now, I wanted to show you, I want to show you some Valentines I received not long ago. There's a new thing in the greeting card industry, and that is special interest Valentines. All of the lobbying groups, I never thought I'd see them, uh, have their own uh, Valentine. Here's one from the NRA, National Rifle Association. I mean, Valentine, amazing. NRA, roses are red and violets can be. What's progress for us is curtains for Bambi, that's right. <laughs> On Valentine's Day, we have you in our sight, but money from gun nuts is love at first sight. Oh, isn't that <laughs> cute? Also, we have a Valentine, a very powerful special interest group, the American Tobacco Institute. Tobacco Institute, our hearts are entwined. Keep smoking, we plead, and long may it grow our lovable weed. It helps politicians in North Carolina who couldn't care less about your angina. Oh, <laughs> okay. And then, I can't believe this. This one is from the Ku Klux Klan. Imagine it. KKK, some of this. Roses are red and so is my neck. <clears throat> <laughs> Ain't none of us playing with a full deck. <laughs> Here comes the media, us Klansmen sure need it. Just got your valentine, too bad I can't read it. Now. We celebrate now in Washington, ladies and gentlemen, for the first time in our history, we have a one trillion dollar budget. We did it, my friend, we did it, I did it. We did, and ironically, we have our first trillion dollar budget in this, the bicentennial year of our Constitution, a document originally drawn up to fit a government the size of your average true value hardware franchise. <laughs> That's right, George Washington would sit down with the cabinet. It was very easy in those days. He'd say, well, let's see, we need about uh, $90 for the Army, $82.50 for the Navy, 88 bucks for the Air Force. <laughs> He's planning ahead. <laughs> and the Department of Transportation needs new toll booths for the New Jersey cow path. <laughs> and we need a special prosecutor for Benedict Arnold. So, I mean... <laughs> Some people said we couldn't do it. They said it was beyond our range. We built a trillion dollar budget, a thousand billion bucks and change. In Washington, they're all excited. The budget gives them all a lift. How did they ever hit a trillion? Ah, oh, the answer's easy. Thrift and future generations will look to way back when. They'll say a trillion dollars was a lot of money then. Incidentally, how do we pay for such an item? A question no need to discuss. It's not as if we own the budget. The truth is, it owns us. That's right there. Uh, thank you. And the new budget includes one hundred and. Five million dollars for the Contra guerrillas in Nicaragua. Why did they tack on that extra five? Spillage and theft. Also, the budget has a 50% cut in, would you believe, drug enforcement? What happened to the war on drugs last year? What happened to the, I'll tell you what happened to the war. All the troops were reelected. I mean, do you remember... I mean, Mrs. Reagan kept saying, just say no, right? Ronnie said, you're right, let's cut it in half. And so, in the magic world of politics, my friends, there's no such thing as a drug problem in a non-election year. I mean, they lead us to believe that all of the addicts have been cleaned since November, and the athletes are using nothing more than recreational Gatorade. And so, <laughs> the budget also includes a, an item, $5.8 billion for the Strategic Defense Initiative Star Wars Dream 
of a dome stadium over all of North America. 5.8. The point eight is for parking and concessions. Laser weapons in the sky, in orbit constantly. M-I-C-K-E-Y, M-O-U-S-E. S-D-I or Star Wars, it's all Mickey Mouse to me. S-D-I-K-E-Y, M-O-U-S-E. See the pie in the sky. What matter that the treasuries run dry? Who's dreaming of a hundred billion dollar shooting star? W-E-I-N-B-E-R-G-E-R. -E -E Weinberger. <laughs> Who's getting high on SDI and needs it desperately? T-R-W. I-B-M-I-T-T-G-E Will the Russians help us test it when completion time is done? If it doesn't work the first time, there goes Washington SDI. My, my, my. Our legacy, the gleam in Ronnie's eye. Let's open up our checkbooks and build Star Wars hastily. M I C. Here's the contract. K E Y. Why? Because we love you. M O U S E. There we are, boys. Yes, yes. Thank you. Thank you very much. Speaking of Mickey Mouse, how benevolent it was of Congress recently to vote overwhelmingly against their own pay raise. Yes. <laughs> Little flim flam, however, they voted against their pay raise, but they waited until after the deadline when the raise would automatically go into effect. That's Congress. Vote for the cut, but first get that raise. That way, they can say, pay raise? What pay raise? I voted against it. And the capper was that they tacked on this phony disapproval of the pay raise to a bill granting aid to the homeless. So there you have a classic case of the homeless being exploited by the gutless. <laughs> Everybody, it's true. Everybody voted against the raise and it passed. <laughs> and they fell to their knees and said, a miracle. <laughs> then you had, then you had a senator who will remain, Senator Lloyd Benson of Texas. <laughs> See what he did the other day, Senator? He put out the word to all the lobbyists in Washington. He said, you want to have breakfast with me, it'll cost you $10,000. Which posed the question, what is yellow and white and cost $10,000 an egg McBenson? <laughs> well, Senator heard that joke, and he uh, changed his mind about it and did away with the breakfast. But the other senators, you still have breakfast with them for $10,000, including uh, Senator uh, Robert Byrd. He, you have Senator Byrd, breakfast, $10,000. For an extra $1,000, Byrd will stop playing the fiddle. So here we have a little song here. I've been to the Washington Monument, the Lincoln Memorial, too. The Japanese cherry blossom trees, they're imported. What else is new? Now the Washington sights are impressive, but the high point there for me would be if I could only realize my greatest fantasy. I want to have breakfast with a senator. Here's a thousand dollars, won't you pass the ham? Here's a thousand dollars for a piece of toast And another thousand for the jam Here's fifteen hundred for the omelet Two cups of coffee, fifteen hundred more I may have spent my money on a breakfast But I bought myself a sanator I call it Wheaties with the greedies for a healthy body politic. Counting up the calories with all of the votes of any senator you pick.
though there's no more egg McBenson. You can choose from 99 other ones. And what a great way to start off your morning with a breakfast of champions. They'll do the dishes. A breakfast of champions. Thank you. Thank you very much. And the biggest development in the presidential race of 1988 is that Senator Mario Cuomo has pulled out of the race. Not so fast, Mario. Not so fast. No, 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 no. The least you can do, Governor Cuomo, is to make the speeches for the other remaining Democratic candidates. Come to think of it, the remaining Republican candidates as well. Thanks for nothing, Mario. You may have pulled out of the race, and now you leave us with a possible contest between Gary Hart and George Bush. <laughs> and there isn't enough caffeine in the world to keep us awake for that one. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> no. Say it ain't so, Mario. Oh, sure, we made fun of your ponderous over-intellectualizing. Your midnight chats with St. Thomas Aquinas <laughs> and Shirley MacLaine. <laughs> but we prefer that over another year and a half of Gary Hart telling us where the beef is. <laughs> Forgive us, Mario. We knew not what we did. We didn't understand you. We didn't understand the intellect of a Cuomo. Just for the past six years, the only intellect we've been exposed to was Rambo. <laughs> Other candidates lining up, we have big names like Bruce Babbitt, Richard Gephardt, Joseph Biden, Chuck Robb. If you have heard of any of these people, you are either a news junkie or a close relative of one of them. <laughs> All right, I'll tell you who they are. Okay, Babbitt used to be governor of Arizona. Gephardt had something to do with the tax bill. Biden once mouthed off to George Shultz, and Rob is married to Lyndon Johnson's daughter. Today, that's all you need to be overqualified. Each one of these men, each one of these men has that necessary fire in the belly, that crazy dream that they can pull it off and maybe wake up one fine morning as Gary Hart, Secretary of Commerce. Now, do I think that Babbitt and Gephardt and Biden and Rob can make it? Individually, no. But collectively, <laughs> as one candidate, who knows? So, ladies and gentlemen, I give you the next president of the United States, Mr. Babhart, Biden, Rob. <laughs> We're Babbitt and Gephardt and Biden and Rob. Together we equal one man for the job. While two of us govern, arrangements allow for two others to sleep like the one in there now. If with one man you're stuck, you're pushing your luck. Babhart, Biden, Rob means more bang for the buck. As a four-in-one dark horse, our problem, of course, is deciding on who is which part of the horse. <laughs> the burden to bear is easier to share when three are protecting the fourth's derriere. Not one man in charge, but four, it appears. Not much different from what we have had for six years. Multi-directional, Bab Hart would fit it. He'd attack Nicaragua, but never admit it. If four's not enough, then just for the laugh, we'll add Gary Hart. That makes four and a half. And Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. That is our show. We want to remind you that the next one is April 22nd, and I would like to sincerely thank all of the public servants who make a show like this possible. <laughs> Only in America, right? 
That's America with a C, of course. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Good night. Thank you. Mark Russell came to you live from the Catherine Cornell Theater, State University of New York at Buffalo. Mark Russell Comedy Special was produced by WNED Buffalo, which is solely responsible for its content. Funding for this program was provided by this station and by other public television stations. For an audio cassette of tonight's program, send a check or money order for $6 to Mark Russell Cassette, program number 1201. Post Office Box 4000, Buffalo, New York, 14240. Please do not send cash. Allow six weeks for delivery. This offer is made by WNED-TV.